Oh, hey! <laughs> Didn't see you there. Me and my hair saw. I'm not wearing any pants. Okay, now that we got the whole pants, no pants thing sorted, let's go ahead and talk airsoft. What's up everybody, thanks for tuning in, checking out my video. This is gonna be a little bit different, still stuck in quarantine, can't really go anywhere playing airsoft and I'm running out of footage. But I wanted to touch on a little bit of history of airsoft. I haven't really seen too much about it, so might as well come from somebody. Um, as you know, I'm in Japan, and Japan has not only been a staple for technology and their amazing culture, um, but Japan is also a country with regulations upon regulations. The main thing that I'm most interested in is, you guessed it, airsoft. But have you ever wondered how airsoft came to be? Well, in the year 1958, the Japanese government wrote into law that no person shall possess a firearm, firearms, or sword, or swords. So, kind of doesn't really allow you to have anything, really. Any kind of weapon. So, later in the years, around the early 1970s, one man by the name of Ichiro Nagata thought about making model guns or guns that do not shoot lethal projectiles, but are made for modeling purposes but shoot real projectiles that could not kill. And these guns were trademarked as soft air guns. Or what they're mainly called today, airsoft. Airsoft guns, airsoft replicas, whatever you want to call them. And as many people know that airsoft guns come in many different shapes, sizes, brands. Uh, there's my Crytac CRB Mark II, one of my favorite airsoft guns I've ever had. It only recently has needed some changes in the internals. Other than that, it's been a solid M4 platform. Now, playing airsoft in Japan is a lot different than playing airsoft in the United States. For one, the jewel rating is a lot lower than it would be in the United States. In the United States, you can usually run an airsoft gun 350 to 400 FPS, depending on the field, whether it's CQB or it's an outdoor field. Here in Japan, it's a lot lower. You have to be at a maximum of 0.98 joules and you can see here my EMG is shooting about 0.79 to 0.96 joules which is right there at that threshold of being able to play and that's at one specific field now other fields do require a lot lower some of them are even 0.81 joules so you're looking at about 260 to 270 FPS now I know this is kind of a boring video, it's just something that I'm really passionate about. I'm really passionate about the history of Airsoft, I'm really passionate about where it came from, how it originated, who invented it, and just to see how everything has grown since then. From the 1970s until now, Airsoft is huge. Everybody, just about everybody that I know, knows about Airsoft or uh, paintball. <coughs> um, <laughs> I just wanted to give a little bit of information and maybe a little history and some commentary on why I'm so passionate about this. I just, I love airsoft. I've always loved it since I was a kid and I got serious into it when I was about 16. It was about 12 years ago. So it's just something I'm really happy to explain more that I can about mainly the history because when it comes to teching, <laughs> don't ask me, <laughs> I don't know nothing. I know enough to be able to take my guns apart and fix them if they're broken, but that's about it. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know, leave a like, ask a question if you have something that I might be able to answer. If I can't, I'll still let you know, and I will answer anything to the best of my ability. I hope you guys have a great day. This has been a Donut Minute.